Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am back again with another reading of The Haunted and today's chapter is called, let me put it here better, No Mercy, Chapter 50. Wow, we are almost done. In the following two weeks, the Smurl family saw the human species at its best and worst. <clears throat> Many people stopped by the house and offered them rosaries and other religious items. From all over the world came cards and letters wishing them well and including special prayers and suggestions about how to handle their haunting. Clergymen of every denomination contacted them and offered them prayers, all except for the present anyway, a representative of the diocese, Jack. One thing that was reassuring about the mail was that we heard from so many people who had had experiences similar to ours. And I mean people from everywhere, Brazil, Puerto Rico, the Netherlands, and many other European countries. That made us feel a little less isolated. Janet, there was no rest for us. During this time when the press surrounded our house, the haunting continued, usually in the form of wrappings or the fleeting appearance of the dark form, while down on our kitchen table, the telegrams and messages stacked up. We put up Wait, I think I missed a word. Oh, no, wait. We put them in grocery bags and in boxes <clears throat> and piled them in the kitchen closet. We just kept running out of room. Fortunately, since most of the messages contained information and good wishes and religious medals, they were encouraging rather than discouraging, but certainly there were things to be discouraged about. Even on Friday, August 22, when West Pittston recorded a significant amount of rainfall. The crowds were merciless, pushing closer, closer, trying for a look inside or to touch family members as they tried to leave the house. Jack. Some people were convinced we were holy and other people were convinced we were messengers from Satan. The latter got very bad when we heard from a coven of witches who wanted to come over and meet us. That's just what we needed at that time. Witches. The people on the street began to display even more bizarre behavior. Janet. Two incidents really disturbed us. One morning, a man holding a handgun drove past our house very slowly. We happened to be looking out the window at the time, and we ducked down, afraid of what he might do. Another man got very close to our front door with a huge machete in his hand. Luckily, several people in the crowd shouted at him, and he ran off. But of all the things that happened during the time of the crowds, probably the most depressing was the phone call from a woman I'd considered a friendly acquaintance, if not an outright friend of mine. Our daughters were in school together. School would start in a few weeks. But she called me one evening <clears throat> and said that she didn't want her daughter to be friends with mine anymore. That really hurt. The reporters had become so overwhelming in their numbers and demands that on August 23rd, at 2 p.m. exactly, Janet and Jack stood on their back porch and read a prepared statement to the throng. As reporters, you can see that this situation has gotten completely out of hand. No one is helping us with our problems. We can't keep up with all the calls and letters, and we don't know how to handle the situation. Please say a prayer for us in church, temporarily at least. The reporters pulled back from the house and gave the Smurls some privacy, but that privacy was not to last long. All right, short chapter. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.